Once upon a time, in the olden days of this great world, we all worked together. Neighbors helped other neighbors, towns supported other towns, nations encouraged other nations. Animals on land, in the sea, and in the air all spoke each other's languages, and humans could hear them too, and respected their wisdom. Back then, we lived happily in the light of the world. Then one day, the light of day started inching farther and farther away from the land. The days got colder and colder. The nights got longer and longer. And the birds of the land noticed first that the light was shrinking more quickly into the night. See, every morning they greeted the sun with song, and every morning the sun awoke later and later. Every evening the birds shivered in the treetops, watching the sun tiptoe earlier and earlier into the ocean. They noticed that we folded our arms more, covered our faces with scarves and coats. They saw humans and animals alike burrow inside and away from each other. The birds didn't understand why or how or if things would ever go back to what was familiar before. But the birds knew before anyone else that we were all about to face the longest night. And so the hummingbird and hawk, the cardinal and shrike, the nightingale and all the birds of the nations got together and asked, will the sun leave forever, get swallowed up by the greedy sea? Will the people continue to hide indoors, ignoring one another, afraid of the night? What do we do? And so the birds with their tiny brains and big, big wisdom saw what nobody else could yet see. They knew it was up to them to warn everyone about the longest night. And they decided that just maybe if they gathered all the wisdom from all the villages in every part of the land, they might even be able to do something to keep the light from leaving forever. They needed to get the great leaders and teachers together in one place to try to save the light. And so they flew from one village to another, asking, who will join us? Who will help us keep the light? Here now, we invite you on this fledgling journey as our birds meet these gurus, these leaders, these muses, as they listen to their songs of wisdom, learn from the stories that they have to tell, hear their instruments of truth, and invite them to meet together when the dark surrounds us on the longest night. Oscuridad, 
going from muse to muse in hopes of gathering all these people to retrieve the light. And while the darkness still grew and the fear still lingered, the birds still danced with hope because everywhere they went, somehow we kept our stories alive and comforting us through the night. Zog mir arain. Say that. Zog mir arain. It's Yiddish for tell me a story. Zog mir arain. One more time. Zog mir arain. Some stories have to be invited. And this is one of those. It's also a story that needs your participation to tell. There's four parts in this story that I need you to help me with. At one point in the story, there's going to be an axe chopping down a tree, and the tree falls to the ground. That's your job. You're the axe chopping the tree. So let's hear an axe chopping the tree. <laughs> Shooting the tree, chopping the tree. It's... Let, let's, let's try again. Oh, that's good. All right, three times. And then the tree cracks and falls. All right. Once the tree is down, then we have to saw the tree into logs. You're the saw. All right, so you've got your log, you've got your saw. All right, then the log falls. Try that again. In the middle, we have a squeaky door. When the door opens, it sounds like this. When it opens, 
<laughs> yeah, you're not stepping on a cat. You're... <laughs> but okay, we get the idea. And then when it closes, and then click. All right, one more time. The fourth thing you all get to do together. At some point in the story, everyone in the congregation is murmuring to everyone else in the congregation, the rabbi was in heaven. 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 So you have to tell everyone around you, the rabbi was in heaven. And then I'll tell you when to stop. <coughs> Zog mir arayn. So Once upon a time, there was a Jewish village. And like all Jewish villages, it had a rabbi. But unlike most Jewish villages, the rabbi of this village was a saint. The villagers knew that the rabbi was a saint because the rabbi was always late to every holy day service. <laughs> he would rush into the synagogue covered in perspiration, huffing, Huffing because he had been in heaven and had just come back in time for the service. And while he was in heaven, he was arguing with God about what a crappy job God is doing taking care of us down on earth. <laughs> the people were convinced, all of them, except one. One was from Lithuania. A Lithuanian Jew is called a Litvak. They're like someone from Missouri. You have to show them. <laughs> and this Litvak didn't believe anything the people were saying, and he wanted to find out for himself. Hanukkah was about to start, just in another day, and he was going to follow the rabbi and see where the rabbi really went, to see if he went to heaven or not. So the Litvak slipped into the rabbi's house, hid under the rabbi's bed, and when the rabbi came back to go to sleep, he just waited quietly. The rabbi undressed, he washed, he prayed, he got into bed, and he slept for a few hours. But then he got up in the middle of the night, went to get dressed again, but put on not his regular rabbi clothes. He put on heavy wool pants, thick boots, and a heavy lumberjack jacket. He tied it on with a belt, and in the belt he put an axe and a saw. Then he took a big, heavy leather sack and threw it on his back and left. The Litvak was under the bed. He saw the whole thing, and he followed the rabbi out. He waited so there was a distance, so the rabbi could not see him, but he could see the rabbi. And the rabbi walked out into the woods, which surrounded the village, and the rabbi trekked for hours. And then he came upon a tree, the right tree. And he took out his axe, and he prepared to chop down the tree. Then he had to cut the tree into logs. So he took out his saw and he started to cut the logs. Lots of logs, but that's plenty of cut. He took the logs, he took some kindling, he threw it all in his big leather sack, threw it on his back, placed the axe and the saw in his belt and started to wander back toward the village. All the while, the Litvak was hiding behind trees, watching the whole thing. But the rabbi didn't go back to the village, even though it was growing late in the afternoon. He went instead to this shack, and he knocked on the door of the shack. You need some wood? From inside the shack, he heard this little old lady's voice. Yes, 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 wood would be nice. So the rabbi came in. He opened the door, stepped in, and closed the door. He went over, and he placed wood in the fire and started a wonderful warm fire that just made the little cabin so comfortable. And then he stacked up logs, enough for the little old lady to use for months. And he left her a little bit of money so she could buy food for, throughout the winter. She was very grateful. He said, it's fine, it's fine. The wood is yours. It belongs to the forest, as do you. And 
then the rabbi left. He opened the door, stepped outside, and closed the door. All the while, the Litvak is watching. Now it's getting very late. When the sun is completely down, the service is supposed to start, and the rabbi is still in the woods. He starts racing back to the village. He gets into the village. He races to his house. The Litvak is following right behind. He goes up into his room. He takes off his lumberjack outfit. He throws on his rabbi's clothes, long black caftan, big wool hat, and a prayer shawl, and he races to the synagogue. And he comes in the synagogue a little late, but early enough to get the service. He's dripping, he's huffing and puffing, and everyone starts to say, see, the rabbi was in heaven. 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 The rabbi, was in heaven. The rabbi was in heaven. stop, <laughs> said the little. The rabbi wasn't in heaven. The rabbi was even higher than heaven. The birds knew they would find joy and wisdom, beauty and grace on their journey, and they did. At each village, someone was willing to leave the comfort of their home and face the dark. Each person was willing to offer some truth that might help restore the light. Each person agreed to meet them at the gathering place. And so the birds carried on as the light kept disappearing, inviting more wisdom to the gathering.
At the end of their journey, the birds flew back to their nests and chatted about all the exciting people they met along the way. They were so ready. Surely this great wisdom all in one place will be the power we need to illuminate the land, they said. At the very least, though, maybe together we might tremble a little less in the dark. And so tired but still determined, the birds readied the gathering place. Soon we would, soon we would all come together and friends were about to face the dark.
To go in the dark with a light is to know the light. To know the dark, go dark. Go without sight. And find that the dark too blooms and sings and is traveled by dark feet and dark wings. The dark around us, come. Let us meet here together, members one of another, here in our holy room, here on our little floor, here in the daylit sky, rejoicing mind and eye, rejoining known and knower, light, leaf, foot, hand and wing, such order as we know, one household high and low, and all the earth shall sing. And with the lighting of the fire, something ignited within everyone. Here we all gathered to bring back the light. 
But what we didn't know was that even in the dark, just being together could feel so right. What we never imagined was how the dark holds truths we were blind to before. The dark makes strangers cry out, which helps us know each other for who we really are. The coldness of the dark makes us hold one another tighter. We discovered how much wisdom the darkness holds when we release our fear. Our eyes adjust to the dark. The dark teaches us to trust mystery. The darkness might force us to lie down, yes, but in the dark, our bones learn how to get back up again. The darkness slows us all down enough just to be together. And so the birds partnered people and simply let them enjoy each other. Instead of gathering in hopes to save the day, the birds realized they must go into the dark and just let all this great wisdom free to play.
So now we're going to bring some more light. We're going to bring light up from within. We're going to bring light down into ourselves. And we're going to share the light among one another. And we're going to do it in Arabic. Okay, not Arabic. <laughs> if there's Arabic speakers and I blow it, I have to find another language. Noor Allah Noor. Light upon light. Try that. Noor Allah Noor. Noor Allah Noor. And there's movement. You can do it in your seat and you can do it standing up. So whichever you prefer, I prefer if you can, you should stand. So now is a good time to do that. It's the longest night, but I have to go home. So the way you do this is you're going to place your hands on your heart. And I'm going to be, we're going to go center and back. And then I'm going to move to my right, which is your left. Okay? And then I'll move to my left, which is your right. And if you crack heads, one of you has no idea which is which. So we'll go slow, but then it's going to pick up. So it goes like this. Noor, Allah, Noor. 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 Noor Allah Noor, 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 Noor Allah Noor. Como nace el sentimiento por las calles de mi pueblo Como nace el sentimiento por las calles de mi pueblo Corazón que canta, corazón que sueña Lleno de esperanza en la noche buena Ya se escucha la tambora repicando de alegría Ya se escucha la tambora repicando de alegría Y me sirve por las olas va la luna en travesía Mecida por las olas va la luna en travesía Corazón que canta, corazón que sueña Lleno de esperanza en la noche buena Va sonando los tambores Pregonando sus amores Corazones que se alegran Ay pues llegó la noche buena Te espera con anhelo el abrazo de tu amada. Por 
corazón que canta, corazón que sueña, lleno de esperanza, en la noche buena, es la noche del sueño, al abrigo de la llama, es la noche del sueño, al abrigo de la llama, es la llama del consuelo que se lleva aquí en el alma, es la llama del consuelo que se lleva aquí en el alma. Corazón que canta, corazón que sueña, lleno de esperanza, que en la noche buena. Corazón que canta, corazón que sueña, lleno de esperanza, y hombre, que en la noche buena. Parolito, ¿a dónde vas? Ay, parolito, búscame. El amor que se te fue. Parolito, ¿a dónde vas? Corazones que se alegran Ay pues llegó la noche buena Llegan sonando los tambores Ay perdonando sus amores Corazones que se alegran Ay pues llegó la noche buena Llegan sonando los tambores Perdonando sus amores Hay corazones que se alegran Ay pues llegó la noche buena Sonando los amores Ay perdonando sus amores Corazones que se alegran Ay pues llegó la noche buena Birds knew we were facing the longest night, and they made a way for us to know the dark together. We must learn to embrace the beauty and the breakdown. We must appreciate that seasons change, that darkness grows, and that light returns around us and through us. Yes, as the darkness becomes more our friend, we are covered in the quiet of the dark. Then, everyone begins to see each other's light. My sunlight is the delight of Earl Grey tea and word puzzles with my love on a slow Sunday morning. My sunlight is the wind whispering against my face as I swing in the maple tree. My sunlight dances with me in donut shops and pirouettes into little girl giggles. My sunlight is the sacred bee buzzing unbound in a field of daisies. My sunlight is the way my heart pounds wild whenever I look at a Basquiat. When she smiles, my sunlight sees people as holy as stars. When she cries, my sunlight wails for justice. My dark is a woman wanting to leap. It's the sister begging her into another tomorrow. My dark holds the hand of my love in a hospital, every nerve in my body quaking blood and trembling down his brow. My dark moves solo into a new home, grieves the end of a life together, holds close the hope of new love. 
my soul, my dark, ask forgiveness. It's the family kissing their dog's nose before she crosses over. It's the diagnosis that drops us low, but the friends that say you're not alone. Men's palm to palm so that humans form a chain around a family in fear. Our light says no more children hiding from bullet showers in schools. Yeah. Our light shocks our eyes wide and helps us see the rainbow of our neighbors. Oh, our light knows we are not here forever. It begs us to do all the beauty we can in all the ways that we can right now while we can. Oh, it reaches into our cracked places and teaches us to shine and shine and shine. Shine I
and Roxanne, and Christina, and Allison, Lisa Spradley, our choreographer. Yeah. It's Roy, the future man, Wooten. Marcella Peniza. Pat Coyle on the piano. Rama Kumaran on the flute. Leoko Suzuki on the harmonium. Josh Hunt on the drums. That's Rabbi Rami Shapiro. On the bass, Mr. Victor Wooten. My partner in crime, the woodwind master, Jeff Coffin. The heart and soul of our show, Miss Sianna Rouse. I want to thank our tech staff, all the sound people, the light people, everybody at Oz who made this possible. My name is Jason Shelton. I'm the artistic director of Portara Ensemble. This long night isn't going to get any longer. Let's dance it out, y'all. Good night, Mary Solstice, everyone.